As a developer, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm pushing 20 years as a software developer. I've been building UIs for 30 years. And every now and then, something comes along that like radically changes how I think about creating software. React is actually a pretty good example of that. And one of the things recently in the last few years that has really struck me is this idea of event-driven workflows, and particularly in my serverless applications. So event is anybody building event-driven architecture style applications or using you know, like that microservices, that sort of thing? So that's not really what I'm talking about. Um, in particular, in my serverless applications, so I'm not running Kubernetes, I don't have Kafka, I don't have BullMQ, I don't have these kind of queue systems. We deploy to Vercel uh, for all of our applications, generally speaking. And they run in a very specific context, and that is serverless. So I need event-driven, but I need it to be easy. And that's where ingest came into my life. So this talk is kind of a love story uh, to ingest. I have been just enamored with their product. I've tried to add this event-driven workflows into my life for uh, half a decade and wasn't able to just for technical reasons. Um, and two years ago, I found Ingest, and it really like, pushed it forward, and I saw it, and I was like, this is a really good idea. Um, Ingest is a service, and in your app, uh, you install Ingest. You emit events. It goes to their servers. It accesses an API route on your server. It calls functions in your app, and those functions emit events. To install it, it's as easy as this, npm pnpm install. Uh, this is a React component here. I'm using, Corey actually said not many people are using React server components, and that actually freaked me out a little bit, because we totally are. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if anybody is, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so we are. So that's a React server component. Uh, it has a, a form handler, and it's being handled that way. We'll come back to that. Uh, I'm going to create a new API route. That route is API ingest route. So this is a very basic uh, Next.js app is what this is. There's no bells and whistles. Uh, it's about as stripped down as it can get. So I'm just going to create a new uh, API route. From there, I'm going to uh, import ingest to the client. I'm going to configure it. It just needs an ID. Uh, then I'm going to export, get, post, and put. So this is an API route. Those are the three API methods that ingest needs to communicate with your application. I'm going to add my client that we just created an instance of. And then I'm going to tell it which functions are available. We're going to create a quick hello world function. Looks like this. We give it an ID. Uh, then we give it a trigger. So in this case, the trigger is event hello world. It's a string. Uh, so that, that trigger can be any event in your application that you are going to want to send. And then we have some sort of executable, a handler that will execute in the context of our application. So this is an API route in my Next.js application, and it will execute in that context. So I have access to my database or any of the other things that, that might be in my application. Finally, I add that to the functions. It was empty before, and now we have a fully configured uh, ingest event-driven system in our application. Come back into the server component. Uh, this is actually important. Ingest runs server side, so it's not a client side library. The actual call to send an event needs to occur up here in, uh, you can see use server up there, so this is a server component. And we're going to send some data along with that event. Um, I'm going to run pnpm dev, which starts my development server. So uh, here's where I was going to take a little bit of a risk. I was going to live code this, but I type it 40 words a minute, and nobody wanted to sit through that. It's not great. It's actually not the bottleneck in my coding practice, but uh, that is me. So I'm just going to start the development server. They told me this might happen. I can work on this monitor over here. It's pretty simple. So this is a super. I didn't even bother putting CSS in this application. It's literally as stripped down as it can get. Uh, and I'm going to trigger a function um, that we, we uh, configured earlier. That's going to open the ingest dev server. 
This is probably like the coolest thing. I've never seen any other system like this where you can get up and running and have a local environment. And what this allows me to do is see what events are being sent within my system. With this sort of event-driven system, you can replay events. You can come in here, and uh, you can see the message that was passed. I just typed my name. We can edit it, send it again. And you can see that occurs. And this is like, this is one of those things. This is, I mean, frankly, to me, this is the, the superpower. The dev server really steps in. And when I start debugging, when I start thinking about you know, handling different events, and I want to send different data, or I want to try different things, I'm able to come in with this dev server. And it just makes uh, life really, really nice. Um, I thought I'd. So this was uh, pretty basic, what we showed previously. And I wanted to, to just show like running, oops. This is what I was talking about with my typing. There we go. So ingest runs steps. That's how it runs uh, the compute in your application. Everything that you run will, will be inside of a step. In this case, I'm just going to make an asynchronous call. I'm going to call the GitHub API, and I'm going to um, switch back over to, I'm going to have to go all the way back. And I'm going to type my GitHub username, just come back over here. You can see it ran a little bit longer that time. And now we come in here, and we get the output. And you can do whatever you needed to do with that data. So that's what it takes. That's how ingest is installed in your application. And at this point, um, I'm going to show you some more about how to like, open this up and the potential of what this can bring to uh, your, your, your workflows. Let's see if it comes back. It did. Nice. All right, so we're done. Uh, this is the Next.js application that I was demoing in. It really runs anywhere that your React application will run. You can run this in Astro apps. You can run it in Lambda, Cloudflare Workers, uh, Remix, Hano, uh, whatever your preference in Jest will run wherever you're at. I'm going to stop just to introduce myself a little bit. I'm Joel Hooks. Uh, Badass.dev is where we are writing about this stuff. I'm a grandpa, and that's my granddaughter. I cook food with my friends a lot. I like modular synthesizers. And I relate to Bobby Hill quite heavily. Um, you can find me at jhooks on Twitter. JoelHooks.com on Blue Sky. We work on courses. That's what we do. Uh, ACAD.io was the first one. We've been around for about 11 years now, uh, making courses over there. Um, with Kent, we've released Epic React, uh, testing JavaScript, Epic Web. Uh, Matt Pocock's Total TypeScript, that's one that we worked on. Just JavaScript with Dan Abramov and Mag Maggie Abram uh, Appleton. Uh, and Marcy Sutton's testing accessibility. Here's some of the rest of them. We have case studies if you're interested in the work that we do. Uh, the platform that we're building and where ingest really comes into my picture is called Course Builder. I called it Visible Source. Uh, it's not open source because we're not supporting uh, it like an open source project. It's for us, but we like to have Visible Source because I think it's cool to, to share real world applications with people so you can check out how things actually operate. Uh, you can find more about it here, joel.dev forward slash course builder. <laughs> so, uh, I kind of identify personally as a, a glue coder. Um, I'm never going to sit down and write a framework. I'll never write a testing library. Um, I'm not going to write the next JS. I'm not going to write a database. What I really like to do is take systems and I, I bring them together into working coherent things that deliver value to customers. I love to program computers, but it's a different kind of program. It's more of a systems bringing them together. Um, they're distributed systems these days. We uh, run on Vercel. We use PlanetScale. Uh, we have Stripe is a big one for us. Uh, Mux, Upload Thing, DeepGram. These are handling our, our media and transcripts and video. ConvertKit, Postmark for email. And these days, uh, as Tay just pointed out, OpenAI and Anthropic are entering into our workflows because I tend to agree with them. Uh, these tools are great, and uh, we're making use of them in our practice. So this is. Like, it's a lot going on. And when I asked if anybody's building event-driven systems, and I think one person in the back raised their hands, I suspect that it actually isn't true if you start thinking about these other services that are in the mix. Because uh, let's say somebody has paid you money, and you're handling Stripe webhooks. Well, I mean, a webhook, at the end of the day, is an event-driven system. It's an event that's being passed to your system, so then you handle it in some form or fashion. 
Typically, Stripe handling looks like this. You need to make sure that it's actually from Stripe because it's dealing with people's money, and you're always needing to make sure when you're dealing with people's money. Uh, we go through with validation. We want to make sure that what is being sent is what we expect, and we want to un then understand what to do with it. And then we do some work. We have some business logic. We take care of whatever needs to get done after a sale has been made. And finally, uh, we get the response, and, and we send that back to Stripe so they know whether it, it succeeded or failed. When I'm talking about a workflow, this is kind of the area of this where, where I would start to think about this as our internal workflow or the internal processes that we use to handle people's money and make sure that things end up in the state that they need to end up in. This is the cool part for me, because at this point internally, now I'm going to just admit an event, and my system is going to pick that up and start to handle it. Um, if you've ever, like this was a really slimmed down example where we are, you know, if we go back, simply updating a database and, and sending a single email, my actual Stripe handlers don't look like this. They look like this. They go, you know, we, I built them in, in Ruby, I built them in TypeScript. Um, they are never like a simple thing. There's always the edge cases you end up handling a lot. And in this case, when I send this out, I can have as many functions effectively listening for this particular event uh, across my system, and anybody that needs to understand that a webhook was received can then respond to that. Typically, um, oh, okay, well, this is ingest. So that comes over to, to ingest. This is a function. Like before, we configure that function and give it an ID. This is the extent of the configuration a function can do. And this stuff um, over here, is where the hard part really comes in. Like having an event handler or having a queue isn't, isn't that difficult, but the con concurrency, the throttling, uh, and impotency, rate limiting, debouncing, priority, batch limits, what happens on failure or just canceling an event that is waiting uh, eventually, like that is particularly difficult to implement yourself. If you start to think about how would I implement all those features in a, in a queue in an event system, um, it's pretty challenging. So we get our event trigger. That was the, the string uh, event that we were sending out. The other triggers that uh, ingest handles are crons. So if you want something to have, happen every five minutes, five days, five hours, uh, you can have cron triggers to, to cr trigger these functions. We can filter them. So you can add complex filters uh, in here. Um, and it's, it's using some Go format for filtering that always confuses me that I don't understand and, and can never actually remember what it's called. But it, it works really well. You're just telling it, in my event, the data event type is checkout session. So that way, only this is the checkout session complete handler function at that point. And now here we have our handler function, the data we need, the customer. And this is what's interesting with ingest is that each one of these steps run it memoizes our customer. It memoizes the result. And if anything happens, like if you've ever ran a Stripe webhook where it'll keep trying over and over again, it'll do that, that kind of logarithmic back off as it retries to keep your data safe. This is where durability comes into the picture. If this fails, if for some reason uh, it, it uh, crashes while it's trying to find or create the customer or that throws an error, this is actually going to, to throw an error, and it will retry. Ingest is going to retry this function. And you have an opportunity to fix it while it's retrying. So you can go in and actually live update, uh, make a push, um, hot fix to main, whatever you need to do. And it, it will pick it up from where we left off. This part's really important, a wait step run. So all the logic that's running, all the, the things that you want to have uh, that security and that safety blanket around, they need to happen within a, a call to step run. Finally, we get the purchase. Now, uh, we've recorded the purchase, and we send the email. So functionally, we haven't changed a lot, but we've gained a lot of durability within our own system, and a lot of control, and a lot of potential in terms of where we can take this. So <laughs> for years, I wanted to, I love ConvertKit. I truly do. It's a great platform. I highly recommend it if you need email, uh, an email list and, and email automation. But I, I've wanted to build my own ConvertKit for years. I want to bring that in. And the reason is I want to have all of my users and all of my marketing information next to my database so that we can you know, like do personalization and send particular emails to particular people with you know, our content and um, the information that's in our database. He's a friend of mine, and he said that to my face. Um, so, 
It really is. It's pretty complex, though, for those reasons that I was talking about. All those different, you know, like making a system like this durable is really challenging. This is a TL draw. I, I put a link here if you want to go, go see the mania. This is currently in production. This is what I'm, I'm currently working on. Uh, trying to build our own email automation system. So when somebody comes to uh, Epic Web and buys Kent's course, they're going to get a really nice follow-up. Uh, Kent's going to get emails about it. Kent's going to get a Slack message. He probably wants an SMS. He really likes to know what's up with his money. I'm able to do that, and we can, we can fan out this event. And instead of just, you know, a customer makes a purchase, record the, the purchase, and send a single email, this is the kind of complexity that I actually want in the system. This is what leads to you know, a, a webhook handler that is three pages long. And then for the customer that has purchased it, we want to wait for them to do something. If they don't actually watch the lessons in the course or they don't create a document in our application, we want to check in with them and see what's up. We, you know, they've given us money. We want them to get value. Otherwise, they might not be a happy customer. And we want to encourage them to do that. So if they make progress, we're going to you know, like give them a thumbs up. And if they don't make progress, we're going to give them a soft nudge. And this kind of delay, you know, this stack of things, is pretty tricky. Like if you think about in your webhook handler, OK, well, I really want to send them an email in three days uh, if they did this. But if they don't do that, then I want to send them a different email. And then if they don't do that in five days, I'm going to send them another follow-up email just to make sure. That sort of logic gets really hairy uh, very quickly. So here's my little baby convert kit. So it's another ingest function. Set up the same. I actually took um, all the, the configuration and the, the trigger out of it. That's the same. This is just the handler function. We wait for them to do something, a document created, a lesson viewed, whatever that might be. We can actually filter this. So now we're waiting for them to accomplish something inside of the system. We're going to wait for three days. And if they don't do that, ingest will time it out, and it'll move on. So if that event doesn't occur, then it'll just you know, move on and proceed with the rest of the execution. If it does occur, we get the document back. So whatever the result of that event, we get that back, and now we have that, and we can send a, a congrats to them. Hey, good job. You've done what you're supposed to do. Um, we, we love to see it. And if not, we're going to follow up and then, you know, like see what's up and, and see what's going on. This isn't doing the, the kind of logarithmic follow-up yet. Um, which is a, is a cool feature, and there's just that kind of uh, continued encouragement that I think keeps people engaged and keep, make, gets them to use your product and maybe stick with it longer than they might have otherwise, reducing churn. So this is still under construction. Um, frankly, uh, I had a full, I could have gone for an hour uh, with, with all this stuff, but like digging into the implementation details, I figure it's kind of a special kind of nerd that might want to go in deep with me as I develop this kind of feature. So I uh, recorded that in a screencast so you can watch it outside of here. Um, and that's uh, the end. So if you would like to see me actually developing this for uh, Jack Harrington's Pro Next JS, um, I'm also doing it for his products, and uh, I've recorded a distinct screencast on coursebuilder.dev, and you can check it out there. Um, I hope uh, at least a few of you will check it out uh, and, and give Ingest a try. Um, they didn't compensate me for this. I'm not a DevRel. I'm just a developer. Uh, uh, anyway, so there it is. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much.